Hello and welcome to our virtual core workshop on the depositional processes and correlation potential of facies of the Joe Mill sand within the Leonardian Sprayberry Formation of the Midland Basin. My name is Jake Kovalt of the UT Austin Bureau of Economic Geology. I'll be presenting with the co-PI of our research group, Zoltan Sylvester. I'll present some of the field and basin framework of our research, and Zoltan will present the common facies, their interpretation, and how they correlate between two wells we've been studying in Borden County, West Texas. If you like what you see and you want to learn more, please contact us at the Quantitative Clastics Lab. Our contact information is shown in the slide below. Here's a location map in the Midland Basin. It shows our area of interest in the central part of the basin straddling Dawson and Borden counties in the Joe Mill field. The red box region defines the study area. Here's a net sandstone thickness map of the Joe Mill unit at the base of the Sprayberry Formation. Red is thick, pink and yellow are progressively thinner. The Joe Mill unit has been interpreted to be a basin-wide submarine fan depositional system. In the next slide, we'll zoom into the Joe Mill field of interest defined by that white polygon. Here's a thickness map of the Joe, unit, Joe Mill unit within the field. And here are the locations of wells and cores we've used in this research. Blue dots are wells with digital logs, red dots are wells with cores. We've described and interpreted all these cores, but we're only discussing a couple of them today, which are located in the heart of the field where the two cross sections AA prime and BB prime intersect. For us, the first step in applying core facies analysis to reservoir characterization is to construct a regional stratigraphic framework. To do this, we use a combination of manual and automated workflows to interpret the logs. My colleague Zoltan, whom you'll hear from in a few minutes, is a world-class sedimentologist, but he also develops code for stratigraphic modeling and automated correlation and mapping in the subsurface. For example, some of Re Zoltan's research was recently uh, highlighted an APG explorer called Chronolog. It automates correlation of wells to create a three-dimensionally consistent stratigraphic framework. Uh, some of the outputs from the algorithm include cross-sections, fence diagrams, and even maps. Uh, we really can't imagine correlating and loop-tying huge data sets comprising hundreds or thousands of wells without this tool. Here's our study area again. The next slides will show stratigraphic interpretations across sections A, A prime and B, B prime. Here's cross section A, A prime roughly oriented down depositional depth. The depth scale on the left is in meters below sea level. The logs are gamma ray. Here's the uninterpreted cross section and the interpreted cross section. The colors are V-shale, with yellow representing lower V-shale. You might also notice color strips adjacent to some of the wells 3521, 4431, 4323, and Dickinson. These colors represent process interpretations of the facies described from cores in the field. Here's that same AA prime cross-section, but flattened on the top sprayberry. Here's cross-section BB prime, which approximates a strike section. The automated chronolog correlation is really valuable to give a first pass impression of the subsurface stratigraphic architecture. Again, we're focused on the lower Jill Mill section, which shows an overall sandy sheet-like character in the cross section. We're trying to highlight the region in the Jill Mill in the white box region. The sheet-like architecture big begs an applied uh, research question for us. If the overall architecture is sheet-like, what are the details of the heterogeneity within the Jill Mill unit of interest? What are the facies and how are they distributed? The cores we're gonna share with you come from the 4431 and 5412 wells within the white box. Let's take a closer look. Here's a location map of the cross section on the next slide. Again, we're focused on the closely spaced wells uh, within the heart of the Joe Mill field. Here's a cross section CC prime. We removed the chronolog correlation lines that we were showing you before, but we've kept the blocking defined by different colors of V shale. So we tweaked the automated chronolog correlation a bit by hand to interpret the detailed stratigraphic architecture of the Joe Mill unit. We've also plotted our interpretations of the cores. The key to those interpretations is to the left. In general, the yellow colors are turbidites, maroons are mass transport deposits, purples are bioturbated sections, and oranges and light gray are different flavors of the extremely common laminated facies, which Zoltan will discuss. 
Here's the more detailed correlation, again, initially informed by the automated chronolog correlation and subsequently fine-tuned by hand based on our experience as deepwater stratigraphers. So we interpret this part of the field to comprise depositional lobes that might be compensationally stacked across the field. The box, the black box, indicates where we have closely spaced and overlapping chord intervals. We might be able to answer some of our questions about how facies correlate by comparing those cores. So zooming in to those three wells, um, here you can see our process interpretations from cores in these closely spaced wells. In detail, at first glance, some units appear to correlate, especially the purple bioturbated units and orange and gray laminated units. Zoltan's gonna take it from here to discuss the main facies in a couple of those cores, 4431 and 5412, and how they might correlate with implications for processes across the field and really at the scale of the entire Midland Basin and other analogous uh, unconventional basins. So my name is Zoltan Sylvester, and I will spend the rest of this presentation showing you some details from two cores taken from the Joe Mill field. To keep things simple, I'm only going to talk about three facies types listed here in order of increasing mud content, turbidites, hybrid event beds, and laminated facies. Let's start with uh, turbidites. As you can see here on the left, uh, where they are shown in bright yellow, turbidites make up most of the low gamma ray facies in well 5412, and they seem to correlate to a section with a lot of laminated facies. Uh, these are the orange colors in well 44. Uh, three, one, over here. The expression of turbidites in the core is the usual. Sharp bases, uh, more lamination uh, towards the top, uh, and a well-defined, although not necessarily very thick, mud cap, as you can see over here and here and over there. If you look at these turbidites under the microscope, we can see that uh, these are quartz and feldspar-rich sands with a low mud content. There's quite a bit of porosity, which shows up in this image as blue epoxy. In terms of grain size, we tend to call these rocks sandstones, but note that about half of the grains in, in this thin section uh, consists of silt, uh, if we look at that histogram over here. So half of this histogram is essentially silt. Uh, moving on to hybrid beds, uh, these are less common, but sedimentologically more interesting than turbidites. They have a darker color that is due to the high detrital mud content. Often they have a cleaner, light-colored lower part and a darker, more mud-rich upper part uh, that has various water escape structures, uh, like you can see here. If we zoom in into one of these water escape sheets, you can see the lighter uh, colored sand that has been uh, cleaned up and then the mud accumulates at the top uh, of the water escape structure. Under the microscope, the high mud content is obvious. These are mud flocules that have been deposited alongside with sand and seal grains. Note the blue streak in the lower left corner. This is probably one of the water escape conduits. And here is a close up of the same uh, thin section. Finally, the third rock type is the laminated faces. The thickness of laminations varies from less than one millimeter to about five millimeters. Note that the thickness of the sand layers varies, but the muddy layers are usually not thicker than two to three millimeters. These faces can make up a significant portion of the Joe Mill Reservoir. Here are two mud layers in a thin section. We can see that there is no obvious grading in these laminations. Uh, and that the mud layers seem discontinuous at this scale. Although mud is pre present throughout, here is, uh, there is a decent amount of porosity in these rocks, especially in the thicker laminated uh, version. The thicker laminations tend to be more continuous than the thinner variety, which shows a lot of pinching and swelling at a very fine scale. Note the scale bar here. These images were created with a portable microscope called Dynolite. Because of this five scale variability, we initially thought that these layers are discontinuous at the large scale. It turns out that we were wrong. More about that in, in a second. Although it is unclear at this point what is the cause, some sections of the laminated faces display some cycles. You can see here in this luminosity curve, six clusters of thicker sand laminations. The coarser and thicker laminations tend to be associated with classic turbidites, and it looks like the percentage of laminated to non-laminated faces can change fairly 
quickly. Bioturbated sections are quite common. Rocks tend to be either strongly bioturbated or not bioturbated at all. This suggests rapidly changing levels of oxygenation in the basin. One of the recent discoveries that we made with uh, Julian Clark of Equinor is that laminated sections from two overlapping cores can be correlated over large distances, in this case over 1.3 kilometers. This is especially obvious if you look at the middle part of this image. Such a striking continuity of these thin layers suggests that these are not deposited by bottom-hugging sediment gravity flows. They could be the result of settling of wind-blown sediment or settling from density flows at the top or within the water column. This continuity of the lamination seems to be pre present over long sections. In the next slide, we will scroll through a three meter thick, predominantly laminated interval that comes from the upper part of the Joe Mill zone, as shown here in the red box. Well number 441 is on, uh, is on the left, well number 5412 is on the right. Turbulites and hybrid beds are going to be highlighted in yellow. So let's look at uh, uh, this section in more detail. And we are going upward in the stratigraphy. There is a turbidite uh, colored in yellow on the left. And you can see all the laminations that I was able to correlate. All those correlation lines are pretty confident lines. Uh, uh, this is an amazing uh, uh, set of correlations at a, at a very fine scale. And you can see that, that some of the turbidites are well correlated, like the one that just uh, scrolled down. And we keep going up, laminations correlatable almost everywhere. Some turbidites pinch out or, or thin a lot. Uh, again, long sections uh, with laminations that are almost perfectly uh, correlatable. There's another turbidite and we got to the top. And uh, that's it. We are thankful to the sponsors of our research consortium. Uh, if you want to find out more, please do not hesitate to contact uh, Jake or myself. Thank you.